This is George Gilbert uh, from Wikibon. We're on the ground at Spark Summit 2015. We're with Justin Langseth, CEO and founder of Zoom Data. So um, tell us a little bit about where the inspiration for Zoom Data came from and, and its uh, unique value add. Yeah, the inspiration came from looking at this big wave of big data technology that was starting to evolve in Hadoop and NoSQL and all that on the back end. And I realized that for the first time in 40 years, like SQL database wasn't the obvious place to put your data anymore. And uh, then on the front end, we saw Apple with the iPad and touch interfaces and realized that the desktop computer wasn't necessarily the kind of future interface for, for uh, humans to interact with data. So we realized both the back end and front end of BI was being disrupted simultaneously and it would be a great opportunity to get in with a fresh company and a blank sheet of paper architecturally and figure out what is the best way to actually build uh, the way for humans to interact with all this big data. Okay, so that's a great way of sort of telling us what the catalyst was. Mm -hmm. Now tell us a little bit more, um, you're, you're appealing to the business user, yep. maybe starting from the business analyst, going further out into the business community, yep. but that data has to come from somewhere. Yep. So where where are you getting it from yep. and who are, you collab who are those users collaborating with? Yeah, I mean the data is in all kinds of places. Most enterprises have data in legacy databases, they have data in flat files, they have data in S3 or Amazon Cloud, they have data in Hadoop, they have data in MongoDB or all these NoSQL places, and then they have data in Salesforce.com or Google Analytics. The data is just spread all over the place right now, and traditionally you try to ETL that into a single data warehouse, um, but what people are realizing is that's becoming impossible, and we've built a technology based on Spark that can natively connect through to all those underlying repositories, and then pull the data only as needed into Spark, and try to push as much of the work to those underlying data stores as possible, and then use Spark as the layer that kind of smooths it all out, so that it can be then joined or fused together to be presented to the end users. So Spark, in this particular case, sounds like a high-performance execution, execution engine, yep. and um, in the case of Spark running in the cloud, let's say yeah. the Databricks cloud, yeah. there's some extra value add where yeah. with traditional business intelligence tools, there's a whole lot of work that goes in with other roles to make it easy and pretty. Yeah. So how do you leverage sure. um, this you know, Databricks cloud or, or other Spark clouds to yeah. do that? Um, so traditionally, the kind of BI business intelligence world would work with data modelers and then ETL people who would build these data models and ETL and then set up the BI tools. So there's a lot of steps and usually like a year at least of work before an end user could actually get a dashboard. So we're seeing that time scale obviously shrink really dramatically. And what's interesting with Databricks and the notebook support they have in Databricks Cloud is that machine uh, data scientists or kind of more advanced code savvy data analysts, they can use these notebooks to build up data pipelines. So traditionally what you think of as data wrangling or ETL or machine learning or data enrichment or stats or all these kind of stuff. And they can kind of do that in the notebooks. And then we've integrated directly with Databricks Cloud so that Zoom data spins up in a little Docker container within Databricks Cloud. And then we've hooked up the metadata so that anything that a user or a more advanced user has created in Databricks Cloud, a data set or advanced machine learning algorithm, that then is automatically pushed into the Zoom data metadata. So the less technical, more businessy type people can just use Zoom data, but they can get native pre-set up access to all those great artifacts and systems that the more advanced people have set up. And as long as the business users trust the person who set up that model, they don't necessarily have to understand how that model works, they can leverage it in their business analysis. Okay, sounds um, clearly very powerful, but yep. give us like a concrete example. When, you know, you might be a retailer with the point of sale data, you might yep. have your inventory data. Yeah. What are, what are the, when you talk about those artifacts and the, yep. the, um, the metadata, what is it that gets passed from the notebook, who's mm -hmm. the sort of more data science guy, yeah. or the data modeling guy, and how does that then mm -hmm. populate and simplify the work of the Zoom data user? Yeah, it's a it's a couple things. So it's the table definitions themselves, so the tables and fields, and that data may have come in to Spark or Databricks Cloud from any number of places and been wrangled or transformed in those notebooks. So the end results of that are clean, wrangled data that's in tables. So that metadata is pushed into Zoom data, and then Zoom data doesn't make a copy of the data, though it reaches into Databricks Cloud to actually execute the queries on that. Then also, like, machine learning algorithms. So if I build a machine learning algorithm, maybe it's a fraud detection algorithm, and I build this algorithm, I test it as a data scientist, I can then deploy that through Zoom data directly so that the less people, technical people don't necessarily understand how this fraud is actually being detected, they can still fraud score the transactions as they're either historically being looked at or even in real time through Spark and Streaming. So in real time, would Spark Streaming be feeding a Zoom 
streaming data dashboard? Yeah, so Spark's Kafka or Spark Streaming or Kinesis, we support lots of different real-time stream engines. And either the Zoom data can accept these streams directly and do continuous processing through Zoom data, which is based on Spark Streaming, or you can stream the data directly into a fast data store, like a MemSQL or something that's really, really fast. And you can like have Zoom data just t effectively tail that data store and simulate real-time visualization against data that's being loaded into something else without even passing through Zoom data directly. And so how has your uptake been now? You were featured at a Sparks uh, meetup, which is yeah. you know, yeah, quite, quite high praise. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's the awareness and how are customers gravitating to you now? Yeah, we're really seeing a lot of people being interested in Zoom data, especially to embed it in other applications, because a lot of people are building data-driven applications or data-driven services, or they just have another application that needs reporting or dashboarding or charts or something in it, and they don't want to have to kind of use legacy 10 or 20-year-old technology if they're building a new system that's going to go last from 10 to 20 years from now. And so they literally like the way we've architected the system, the way it's built on Spark, handles real time. And on the front end, just how we've built a really rich JavaScript SDK that can be embed our, our visuals into other modern JavaScript applications without iframes, without any flash or any of this kind of old stuff. And so we're really getting a lot of uptake from these people who want to embed white label Zoom data or embed it into other applications, but leverage this whole stack of stuff that's under the covers. Okay. Justin Langseth, CEO and founder of Zoom Data. This is George Gilbert on the ground at uh, Spark Summit 2015.